On February 16, 1997, Wu Jianxiong or Qianxiong Wu passed away due to illness at her home in New York. Her ashes were later placed in Mingda High School in Jiangsu Province, China, which is her hometown. Before her passing, Wu had participated in the American Manhattan Project and helped manufacture the first atomic bomb. Despite holding American citizenship at the time of her death, her family buried her ashes in China, with her tombstone reading, she was an outstanding global citizen and a forever Chinese person. So what were Qian Xiang Wu's achievements in the scientific field? Why did she help the Americans make an atomic bomb, change her citizenship, and still be referred to as a forever Chinese person? Today, let's get to know China's Madame Curie, Qian Xiang Wu. In 1936, 24-year-old Qian Xiang Wu traveled to the United States to study at the University of California, Berkeley's physics department. She specialized in nuclear physics research. Afterwards, she went to the famous Smith College in Boston as an assistant professor, and soon moved to Princeton University to teach physics to military officers participating in defense programs. Because of her long-term interaction with military officers, as well as her outstanding personal abilities, Wu was quickly selected by the U.S. authorities to join the highest level of the Defense Department's top secret mission, the Manhattan Project. Wu became the only Chinese woman to participate in the action of making atomic bombs, entering the laboratory at Columbia University as a senior scientist. Xian Xiang Wu made a considerable contribution to the production of the American atomic bomb. To this day, most nuclear power plants use zirconium alloy clad fuel rods to prevent the gas that absorbs neutrons from spilling out, which was inspired by Wu's work. On July 16, 1945, with a loud noise, the first atomic bomb in human history was successfully detonated in a desert in New Mexico. This thermal weapon, the most powerful and lethal in human history, ushered in a new era in world military history. Three weeks later, the U.S. military dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. Under this unprecedented fear and intimidation, World War II finally ended, and China ended its 14-year war against Japan. Because of this, some believe that Qian Xiang Wu's contribution to the Manhattan Project has an immeasurable significance for China. These two atomic bombs spared countless Chinese people from sacrificing their lives on the battlefield. Indeed, as the only Chinese woman to participate in the Manhattan Project, Wu used her unique methods to end the war and rescue countless people suffering in the flames of war. Aside from the Nobel Prize, Wu has received the National Medal of Science presented by the President of the United States, the Comstock Prize in Physics awarded by the National Academy of Sciences, the Albert Einstein Medal from the Albert Einstein Society, the Pomeranchuk Prize from the Institute of Theoretical and Experimental Physics in Moscow, and the Wolf Prize in Physics from Israel. In short, she has won every major scientific award that exists. Despite her high achievements in foreign countries, Wu has not forgotten that she is a Chinese and always cares about the development of scientific research in China. Her father, Zhong Yi Wu, was an educator who founded the Mingda Women's Vocational School locally and became an important guide for her growth in childhood. After graduating from elementary school, Wu was admitted to Suzhou Second Girls Normal School with excellent grades. At the age of 18, she was enrolled in the Department of Mathematics at Nanjing Central University with a scholarship. Due to the influence of Madame Curie, she had a great interest in physics and transferred from the Department of Mathematics to the Department of Physics. Here, Wu truly embarked on the path of seeking scientific truth. Perhaps she never imagined that she would be named with Madame Curie years later. At that time, China was in a period of internal and external turmoil, and there were simply not enough conditions for her to further study physics. After thinking it over, Wu decided to temporarily leave her motherland and go to the United States, where scientific research was most advanced, to study. Wu knew that the country and the nation were in the most dangerous moment, but her own strength was too weak. She could only bring back more advanced physics knowledge from the United States to achieve the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. In 1936, Wu left her hometown and went to the United States to study. A few years later, Wu fell in love with and married Yuan Tia Li, a well-known Chinese-American physicist. 
On the long road of life, her husband, Yuan T. Ali, played a great role in both her personal life and academic research, becoming an indispensable key figure on her path to success. Both of them were patriots, but because China was in the period of the War of Resistance against Japan, they could not return home to serve their country. Fortunately, Wu had the opportunity to participate in the Manhattan Project which accelerated Japan's surrender and contributed to the Chinese nation. When Wu and Yuan T. Li were in China, they were always dissatisfied with Chiang Kai-shek's policy of non-resistance. After the end of the War of Resistance, they were angry with Chiang Kai-shek for launching the Civil War. After the founding of the People's Republic of China, Wu and her husband were eager to return to their motherland immediately, but they had to give up due to the fact that the relationship between China and the United States had not yet eased. Finally, in 1971, with the visit of Henry Kissinger, Sino-U.S. relations returned to normal, and Chen Ningyang was the first Chinese scientist to return to the mainland for a visit. Two years later, Wu and her husband embarked on their journey back to China. They first arrived in Guangzhou, then returned to their hometown of Lohexiang, and finally came to the Great Hall of the People in Beijing. At this point, the couple Qianxiang Wu and Yuan met with Premier Zhou Enlai, one of the leaders of New China. They talked about the scientific research issues of China for more than six hours, providing Premier Zhou with many valuable suggestions. Since then, Qianxiang Wu and Yuan have returned to China from the United States for several consecutive years to give lectures and provide constructive suggestions for many scientific research projects in their home country, as well as offering sufficient support. How can we promote the long-term development of scientific research work in China? Qian Xiang Wu and Yuan deeply understand that New China does not lack talent, but rather a good educational environment for scientific research. Therefore, the scientific and technological development of China cannot rely solely on one or two famous people in the future, but must start with education. In 1978, Vice President Bao Zhangmo of the University of Science and Technology of China led a delegation to the United States to attend the annual meeting of users of electron synchrotron accelerators held at Stanford University. At the meeting, Qian Xiangwu and Yuan gave a detailed introduction to their compatriots on the dynamics of the U.S. scientific community and used their professional knowledge and experience to make key suggestions for the engineering design of the synchrotron accelerator that the University of Science and Technology of China was building. The members of the delegation from the University of Science and Technology of China were deeply inspired and warmly invited the couple to visit them. Qian Xiangwu accepted the invitation and made a detailed investigation and analysis of the University of Science and Technology of China. They also gave two reports to the faculty and students, Neutrinos in the 1980s and Progress in High Energy Physics Research and High Energy Accelerators, to help students access the most advanced physics knowledge in the world today. In September 1984, the National Synchrotron Radiation Laboratory of the University of Science and Technology of China was about to break ground, and Yuan and Wu once again returned to their home country to provide academic guidance. During their years in the United States, they were always concerned about the development of China's scientific and technological strength and the cultivation of scientific and technological talents. Therefore, after Qian Xiangwu's death in 1997, she asked her family to bury her ashes in Mingda Middle School in her hometown, in order to inspire every student to strive for the development of Chinese science. Although Qian Xiangwu did not receive the Nobel Prize, she has something more precious than the Nobel Prize. At the commemorative conference held for her at Peking University, Mr. Li Zhangdao quoted Madame Curie to evaluate her. We should not only remember her achievements in her work, but also her success in knowledge, her noble character and morality and personality, which are crucial for the future and history. Although Qian Xiangwu did not receive the Nobel Prize, her contributions to the field of physics and her efforts for the peaceful development of mankind are enough to make a name. Even though she is in a foreign country, Qian Xiangwu still silently contributes every bit of her knowledge and experience to the development of science and technology in China. She is a Chinese forever. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions, just leave them in the comments section. We'll come back as soon as possible and check them, and then we'll give feedback. See you next time.